Lego fans, you know what I love? Yeah, I I love Lego, of course, yeah, but I also love licensed themes. I pretty much only collect licensed themes. And it got me thinking, what really, really strange licenses are there out there that Lego has had that, like, I haven't looked at in a Lego set before? I mean, Lego's a pretty old company, so surely there's some themes that just kind of float out of our memory for better or for worse. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole. So I'll return to my original question. Lego fans, what do I love? Basketball. Yeah. To celebrate the commencement of the NBA Finals, I thought it'd be pretty cool to look back on this forgotten LEGO theme 21 years later. You guys see the title of the video, 20 years just rolls off the tongue better than 21 years, but yeah. We're gonna be looking at this forgotten LEGO theme 20 years later. There were eight of these sets produced back in 2003, and for the most part, each of these came with three minifigures and collector cards, so it was kind of a strange mix of two different types of collecting. You had NBA card collecting and then Lego collecting, of course, mixed into one, but like I said, some of the sets did not come with the cards, which was strange since I bought these sealed. I don't know if this was the case across the board. It actually took me a couple tries to find a pack that did include the cards, regardless, finally coming across those coveted tops cards. It's a nice feeling, man. The box actually contains the cards and then a little bag, which has the stand and minifigure parts in it. And first off, we have NBA Collectors number one. This one is set number 3560. It includes 12 pieces and retailed for eight bucks. Here's a super quick look at the cards. And our first minifigure up is Ray Allen, back when he was on the Bucks. This figure is really cool. I really like the shade of purple that LEGO used for this figure at this time. Um, the Bucks have always had pretty cool uniforms in my opinion, but you can see the faces are definitely a main point of attention with these minifigures. Same goes for Tim Duncan, who is one of my favorite players. I have him in my top 10 NBA all time, but these were the home jerseys for the Spurs in that white color there. Again, the faces that come in these sets are definitely a staple of this time period, but these were our first flesh tone colored Lego minifigures, so these figures were actually pretty monumental for the time, and same goes for Pau Gasol. Next up, we have NBA Collectors number 2, set 3561, and it's got 12 pieces. Unfortunately, this set gives us our first Boston Celtic. This is Antoine Walker in the road uniform. Listen, I am not a Boston Celtics fan by any means, but the minifigure looks pretty cool. Um, I actually do like how this uniform translates into minifigure form, and you could even use the torso piece for a Kemba Walker figure. Next up, we've got Tony Parker. I actually think this figure could have definitely benefited from the lighter flesh tone colors that would come in later years, perhaps a medium nougat color, but yeah, along with all of the faces in this wave, it could definitely use some work. I like the reflective silver though on the torso print. Next up, we have our big in the set. This is Shaq, of course, Shaquille O'Neal in his dominant Lakers years. I'm a huge fan of this figure. I really love these uniforms in this time period, both the yellow and the road uniforms I think are really cool for the Lakers. Come on, man, Lego Shaq. The likeness is actually pretty good on this one and I'm a fan of this. NBA Collectors number three, set 3562, 13 pieces, three minifigures. This set gave us Gary Payton, who played on a team no longer around. Payton was pretty nice, let's be real, but the Seattle Supersonics would eventually become the Oklahoma City Thunder, so it's kind of cool to have a minifigure commemorate a NBA team that is no longer around. Moving on, we have Dirk Nowitzki. Now, Dirk is another one of those players I watched a lot of growing up, you know, seeing him battle it out with the Miami Heat in those finals. Those are the all-time moments 
that you kind of remember. Now, when I was growing up watching Dirk, he had his longer hair. So this, of course, is the version earlier on in his career with the shorter hair. And he is the only figure in all of these sets to use a hairpiece. No second expression, of course, since this was 2003. Next, we got Vince Carter, who is another one of those players that, man, it's so cool having him as a minifigure. This is one of those dynamic players. A lot of fun to watch when you go back and watch some of his game. The Raptors historically have some of my favorite NBA kits. Um, I pretty much like all of them except for the current Raptors uniform. NBA collectors number four, set number 3563, 12 pieces, three minifigures. This set gives us a Bucks teammate for Ray Allen in Tony Kukoc, which is a nice figure to get. Don't really have too much of an opinion on Kukoc. Honestly, not a player whose game I analyzed super heavily during this era. But moving on, we have probably the most desirable figure across this entire theme, really. It's Kobe Bryant. Um, in his number eight at the time since he didn't switch to the 24 till around 06, 07 season. What more can be said about Kobe, honestly, that, that hasn't already been said? You talk about the ultimate competitor in the game, one of the most creative scorers the game has ever seen, part of arguably the best duo the game has ever seen. Kobe Bryant was a very, very special player, and it is so nice to have, you know, a physical collectible, basically, to remember his game. Moving on, we have Jason Kidd in his colored New Jersey Nets uniform. At the time, they were in New Jersey. Of course, now they're in Brooklyn, but I primarily remember Jason Kidd as a Dallas Maverick. That's just the era of basketball I grew up with. You know, later in his career, you would see him team up with Dirk Nowitzki to torch the Miami Heat, which, of course, is a delight to see. <laughs> I know I'm going to have Heat fans in the comments. NBA collectors number five. We have Carl Malone, who played for the Utah Jazz of course. This uniform is a classic to me, okay? This Utah Jazz uniform is such a staple, it's no wonder they brought it back for their city uniforms this past season, and it was one of the only city uniforms this season that was even bearable to look at with your eyeballs. We have one of my all-time favorite NBA players, that's Allen Iverson, AI in his black Sixers uniform. I have always loved these uniforms for the 76ers. In general, I feel like the 76ers have always had a pretty nice uniforms, but something about these Sixers uniforms are just a classic to me. AI did have cornrows, so it's interesting to see Lego's take on that with a print on the top of the head despite not actually having a physical hairpiece to put on top of the figure's head. Easily one of my favorite figs out of this collection, just out of the bias for being an AI fan. Moving on, we have Steve Francis who played for the Houston Rockets. These these Rocket uniforms were pretty cool, and I think they're one of the better translations into minifigure form. Yeah, it's colorful, it pops. NBA Collectors number six. Our first figure up is Jerry Stackhouse from the Detroit Pistons, who have, of course, become a laughing stock in the NBA this past season. Setting records, just not sure the records they wanted to be setting. Pistons fans, I don't even need to say that the 96 to 2001 uniforms are the absolute best. So getting this boring uniform on this figure, eh. Moving on here, we have Steve Nash. Would have been nice to get a Suns Nash. I mean, I understand that was outside of this era that they were basing the sets off of. This is one of the worst faces that they have in this entire line. I don't think that the hair really works well for this. The eye color being changed is a weird choice. Moving on, we have Paul Pierce. Jokes aside, I can acknowledge that Paul Pierce was a very, very good basketball player. That year they won the finals with Garnett and Ray Allen. Yeah, it's one of the best super teams, okay? I've got a dump on the Celtics though, as always, so Boston winning this finals would only vindicate Jason Tatum worshippers, and that's just not a world I want to live in. NBA Collectors number seven. Set number 3566, 10 pieces. The first figure up is Jalen Rose, who has since become a pretty respected commentator in the NBA community, though if I were to have any Bulls player in minifigure form by the last name Rose, it would certainly be Derek Rose, who is a player I definitely grew up watching as a kid. But regardless, it's pretty funny to see a plastic embodiment of Jalen Rose's already very plastic looking hairline. Moving on, we have Kevin Garnett, KG. 
as Adam Sandler would say. This figure is definitely one of the ones I'm happiest to have. I love the Timberwolves uniforms. KG, man, what an electric player. Pretty much for every franchise he was on, except the Brooklyn Nets. We're not even going to talk about that quote-unquote super team. The set also includes Predrog Stojakovic, who of course played for the Sacramento Kings at this time. The Kings, man. The Kings have always had cool uniforms too. Purple is my favorite color, in case you didn't know, so I'm a little partial to having that opinion. NBA Collectors number 8. Set number 3567 includes 12 pieces, 3 minifigures, and retail for 8 bucks. Our first figure up in this final set is Tracy McGrady, T-Mac. What a legend this guy was. Um, you just talk about a super fun player to watch, a great player for the Magic. The Magic have such cool uniforms, it's hard to decide which one I like best for them, but this is a great figure. You also get Chris Webber in the set. Uh, Uncle Drew star along with Kyrie Irving and a couple other players but this guy went head to head with Kobe and the Lakers you know around this time as well it's one of the really big moments but Chris Webber himself was an awesome player as well sometimes I see his college jersey up at Lids which is pretty cool next up we have Mr. Allen Houston from the New York Knicks a lot of you guys out there may not know this just because I never talk sports on this channel, but I am actually a pretty hardcore New York Knicks fan. If you don't know, I actually had the chance to go ahead and watch them play live in April with my family, which was pretty awesome. But this to me is one of our all time guys kind of on the lower side of all time Knicks, but he was one of the only good players for us during this period, especially coming out of the Ewing and Starks years. I did want to give you guys a quick look at the cards. We'll use Stojakovic's here as an example, but you can see it has a gold seal there and then the stats right on the back, kind of like those regular upper deck cards. It is worth noting though that there are different cards for individual players. You can see this Chris Webber one on the left has a silver seal in the bottom left corner, while this one on the right has a gold seal seal that's kind of reflective. They also have different pictures, so I don't know if these are chase cards or what the story is. I also wanted to give you guys a look at the full collection of cards lined up with all of the sets. These are the cards that I got. Like I said, some didn't come in specific sets. I don't know why, but it is a very nice complete collection, something unique for Lego and, you know, just not something we really see now. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. That is definitely a look at all of the Lego sets. Oh wait, there's more. Set number 3433, the Ultimate NBA Arena. It retailed for 80 bucks, had 491 pieces, and 10 minifigures. The first minifigure it included was Allen Iverson in this white uniform, which you can kind of see how it differs from the one in the collector pack. I'll actually include the versions from the collector packs on the right side of the screen for all of the minifigures, just so we can see how they compare. And yeah, this AI is just another great minifigure. Not a fan though of the inclusion of Antoine Walker who you can see also differs from his version found in the collector set. They just inverted the colors but you know that is how the NBA uniforms work so this version is of course exclusive to the set along with all of the other minifigures except for two of them which we'll discuss. Jason Kidd is no different. Uh, he also has an exclusive variation though I don't know why the spring in his leg is yellow on one spring but silver on the other. Just thought that was a little odd. T-Mac is also included in this set. Man, this just makes it even harder as far as choosing which Orlando uniform I like better. The Magic just have some really cool uniforms as we discussed earlier. So definitely happy to have this one. T-Mac was so nice back in the day. Vince Carter's another one who also differs from his version in the set. So for the East characters, at least, I believe all of those are exclusive. Most of the West ones are. And this is the first non-exclusive figure in the set. It's just a copy and paste of the version from the collection pack, which is kind of a shame. I mean, I know they were trying to keep the West with the colored uniforms, just probably would have preferred a different character altogether. This version of Kevin Garnett, ugh, it's so difficult to choose a favorite as well. Like I said, I love the Timberwolves uniforms, but it's nice to see 
some variation with the KG minifigure, um, especially with him being one of the most electric players, you know, in this modern era of the NBA. So happy about that. This Kobe figure though might be my favorite figure in this entire theme. I love the color purple and these Laker uniforms, the road ones were just some of my favorites, are some of my favorites in NBA history. I prefer them to the yellow uniform that the Lakers use for the most part. And the yellow lettering is really cool or the outline on the lettering. So I love it. That same love is absolutely shared with the Shaquille O'Neal figure included in this set. He obviously is just kind of an inverted version of the one found in the collector's pack. Another figure that just came out great in both variations. I do wish the purple was a little bit deeper though, kind of to match, but you know, that's just the color that was available to Lego at the time, so I can't really fault them for it. Steve Nash is also a copy and paste from the version found in the collector set. He is one of two figures that I said was not exclusive to this set, him and Dirk, of course. Would have just liked a different player duo altogether, maybe from a team that wasn't found in the collector packs. It is what it is. If you thought the collector's boxes were pretty cool, LEGO really made a full-on arena, and as for the build process, it was pretty dated, I will admit. Once the whole thing comes together, it's not super strong, but it is a lot of fun to mess around with. It is a pretty complete court, all things considered. I mean, you have a hoop on each side of the floor, you've got a five on five going on, and then as for the gameplay mechanics of it, we'll get into more of that just a little bit later on, but I wanted to give you guys an overall look at how this works. So you get a figure, and since they have the springs in their legs, they kind of just flick back, and that's how you're able to shoot with them. I mean, I didn't really explain the whole spring thing in the minifigure close-ups the first time around because I kind of wanted to save the arena as a surprise but you kind of swivel the figures around to make them pass or you can have them point certain positions which is pretty nice and then just have them score by kind of finding the balance and uh, making a shot. You can also lift each tab up on the scoreboard. There is a blue team and a red team so that you can keep score. It's the first one to five that wins. Each side of the court has these kind of steering wheel looking mechanics to them and the whole point of that is for you to be able to turn that and get your player to block and also move side to side so it's kind of cool how it works you just kind of turn the knob you can twist it around it's on like a little turntable almost and that basically just ascends the player into the air unfortunately it is pretty fragile as I mentioned it doesn't take much to accidentally knock the basket over then that entire gear assembly gets knocked out of the picture suddenly you've got a broken set on your hand so I wish that was built a little bit better the core Court is pretty complete as far as the graphics go. You've got a Lego Studios logo on here. You've got Lego NBA, just NBA, Lego Land. There's a little tunnel for the players to run out of, and it's pretty bare bones, honestly. The bleachers are blank, like there's nobody to put there, but I guess you can put in a bunch of minifigures. And it is also worth mentioning that the set includes four balls, although only one of them has the Spalding NBA logo on it, so that's going to be the one that I want to use. And just looking back down on the set, it presents kind of nicely. It's not really one you'd display, kind of one you'd play with, but again, it's very 2003-ish of the LEGO group, so I'm giving them a little mercy there. Overall, I think these sets are a lot of fun. They're definitely strange, that's for sure. LEGO is kind of suffering from an identity crisis at this time as far as what the next move was for the style of their minifigures, specifically the licensed ones. Um, I think the Cards are a cool idea. Upper deck, you know, NBA cards are a pretty popular thing. Mix that with Lego and I think it's a pretty cool collaboration. The number one value for me here is definitely the minifigures and how that collection displays. I think some of the duos that you were able to have in these sets are awesome. Some really iconic duos. The number one one being the Kobe and Shaq duo, but you do get a lot of cool matchups. It's cool to imagine what a modern NBA theme might look like, so I just switched around some of the parts on the minifigures. Here's Kobe and Dirk, and uh, long hair Dirk as well, which is the Dirk I grew up watching. Um, but yeah, definitely a huge difference to kind of what we would see now. Really makes you wonder what players we might be able to see nowadays. An Anthony Edwards, a LeBron James, a Jalen Brunson. 
Jason Tatum, all these kinds of dynamic, explosive players, Luca. These are guys that you'd want to see as modern Lego minifigures. So I do hope we get to see that one day. Until then, I'll wait around with these minifigures. It's a cool time capsule in Lego and NBA history. But I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. If Lego came out with a modern NBA theme, would you buy the sets? Who are some of the players or teams you'd want to see sets on? Me personally, I'd love to see my new York Knicks replicated as minifigures. Um, you know, gonna have Jalen Brunson holding up the Larry O'Brien in that display as well. I hope I didn't just curse our franchise for another like 50 years, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I will see you guys later. Please comment as well who you guys got in the NBA Finals, and don't go editing those comments too once whichever team you guessed didn't end up winning, okay? Thanks a lot, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already. This video took a ton of work. I actually filmed the footage over the last few months, so this has been a long-standing project that I wanted to come out for the NBA Finals. So I really appreciate you guys liking the video. Share it, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.